Uh, my name is Dennis Paul. Um, I'm the managing director of uh, Gemkill. Uh, Gemkill is a product that comes from the UK. It's, it's the microbial from the UK. Um, it was introduced to us about nine to twelve months ago. And the UK seemed to have failed to do any testing there. There's been some argument about how they're going to test and what they're going to do. But, but as you all know, Hong Kong is progressive. We got a hold of it, we tested it. It proves good and people will be enlightened to you how good it is as we go through this presentation. Uh, but I'd like to introduce our speakers this afternoon. The first one will be Nathan Tillery. Nathan is uh, my general manager and he has set up the plant in uh, Chinwang, uh, which is now in production. Um, so it's a chemically clean plant and will be producing hopefully enough to satisfy Hong Kong and the Far East. Uh, Dr. Vic Garner is from the UK. He's uh, an eminent doctor from the UK. He's been on Discovery Channel uh, on forensic archaeology. Uh, he's well known there for uh, many things he's done there. He was a designer of these products. Um, he started off helping the food industry in the UK solve some of their grease and dirty problems and killing disease and it's led on to these products we have today. So without any more talk from me, I will introduce you and start the presentations with Nathan. Thank you very much. <clears throat> We're quite excited about uh, what you can read up here. Uh, a brand new surface treatment uh, unlike any other surface treatment or disinfectant that you've probably ever heard about. Uh, we sum it up in basically one big word, microbium. Microbium is a system that offers a new level of treatment in helping to control the transmission of disease from people to people, from animals to people, and so on. Excuse me, I have to start another slideshow. You'll recognize many of the names that are coming up there as things that we read about in the newspapers quite often, in particular lately in Hong Kong. Uh, we've had a serious uh, increase in MRSA, or the superbug, in the hospitals here in Hong Kong. But these are just a few of the microbes that can actually affect not only you personally, but entire countries. They're already showing resistance to drugs, and they're very hard to control once they get inside your body. So the idea is to use a non-toxic, safe method to prevent them from ever getting close to you. The product comes from Soilbind in the UK. This product has a long history. Antimicrobial uh, products have had a history of over 20 years. Um, a number of different patents, a number of different approvals for the components that are used in our product. Uh, you can read down through here. Uh, it's been used for many, many years in various forms. I'm not going to answer too much technically about the product. I just want to give you a few ideas about the product. And Dr. Garner is going to go into a much more technical description. Microbium system is a system. It comprises of several different products. We have a product called Deep Clean, which is used to prepare surfaces for the application of Super Seal A which is the actual antimicrobial coating which remains on a surface for a long time. We have a daily cleaner product which we call a daily clean. Obviously this is used to maintain the integrity of the surface by a gentle cleansing action to, to remove microbes as they might build up and die on the surface. And finally, we have the most unique part of the system which is the ability to test it. It's called monitor the ability to test it in place, anytime, anywhere, and see that it's actively still there just by using a simple UV flashlight. So how do we use this product? All surfaces, including clothes, carpets, tabletops, all surfaces have some form of biofilm on them because by these uh, <coughs> Uh, microbes will attach themselves 
and stick to clothing and stick to surfaces. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get rid of this original biofilm and get a clean surface so that we can apply a product called the microbium. We can spray or wipe the super seal solution on. Uh, we allow it to dry and it leaves a surface of what we refer to as little tiny spikes or the actual uh, part of the chemical that does the killing. We can monitor and check that we're covered when we do the first application by simply using the uh, monitor solution and illuminating with a UV light. When you look at how it actually works, it's a, it's a molecule which Dr. Garner is going to explain that hooks into the surface and hooks into the molecules that are next to it. Uh, there it goes. It actually builds up a completely interlocking surface coating about 10 microns thick. As you wipe it on and spread it, it fills all the crevices. It'll fill the top parts of the surface. And the way it works is that when microbes come in contact with it, they're actually punctured. We go right through the membrane. It kills the, mem it kills the microbes, which we then have to clean off on a regular basis. Now, what we normally do today is we try to use something like Clorox or Detol, and we wipe down a surface, and we kill the bugs. But as soon as that Clorox or Detol or other solutions, alcohol or whatever you may use, as soon as it dries, it stops killing. Where ours continues, to actively kill for a long, long time. We do have to keep removing, though, this layer of dead microbes to keep the product effective. Regular cleaning with deep clean or daily clean will restore the surface activity, and we can always check at any time with our torch to see that we're actually still killing the, 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 the bugs. The nice thing about the torch is it allows you to inspect fairly large surfaces and determine that wow, this surface is still doing very well, but over here, maybe it's a doorknob, and so many people have grabbed the doorknob that we've rubbed the stuff off. Oh, we can test that, and we can then reapply just to the doorknob. Therefore, it's a very economical, long-term solution. As a definition, biocides are intended to kill or otherwise exhibit an inhibiting effect by a chemical or biological means. So a chemical as a pesticide is capable of killing living organisms. So it happens that we would classify microbium as a pesticide or a, a biocide. However, the nice thing about it is it's more than just a disinfectant because once it locks onto the surface, it is completely toxic free to us or to our pets or to our children. Eventually, with the chemicals that we've been using up to now, and as I just got an article uh, off of a newspaper a couple of days ago, these chemicals are getting stronger and stronger because the bugs we're trying to kill are more and more immune to them. Microbium contains no heavy metals. It's completely non-toxic. It once locked into a surface, it's impossible basically to get it off short of sanding it, filing it, or wearing it off by abrasion. But even if you do take it off like that, it will not go into the groundwater. It will not go into our environment and cause any long-term difficulty. There's a term for these kinds of chemicals, a kind of measurement to see how dangerous they really are to people. It's called LD50. An adult would have to drink more, much more than a container like this in one go before you would have any serious effects on killing, uh, killing people or affecting uh, your illness. Once it's dried in place, there's absolutely no way it could be toxic to anybody. After we initially clean with our deep clean, and then we apply the super seal, you do have to keep cleaning the, the uh, surfaces regularly, but everybody's doing that anyway. What we're talking about is changing and removing the Cloroxes, the heavy detergents, the bleaches, the things that we're doing now are no longer necessary. There are many chemicals that have just been building up into our water systems that are now going to cause us trouble and our children more trouble than they're causing us, but we're not going to have that problem uh, with our surfaces. Depending upon the wear and abrasion, how much, you people, uh, how much people rub it, touch it, uh, or whatever comes in contact with it, the treatment can remain active for months. Uh, I think we've given you some test information 
Uh, we ran one test out to about 280 days now, I think, isn't it, Ian? <laughs> 280 days, still 99.98% effective. Obviously, if you have a surface where you have a lot of wear and tear, you will have to retreat, retreat the surface a little more often. We've tested it on a lot of cloth materials, put it into washing. After uh, 50 washes, we're still 85% effective. However, the secret is you can continue to add microbium to the washing treatment and super seal, or the, the uh, deep clean, and remain 100% effective under a regular maintenance program. As I said, we can test by using the special, whoops, went too far, by using the special torch with a monitor, anybody with about three minutes worth of training can learn how to tell whether the surface is still active or not. More than just saying that the surface is still active, supervisors can monitor the cleaning people at any time by going around and checking that the cleaning people have actually done their job. As I said, we can spot apply the super seal anytime we need on any specific part without having to spend money to recoat the entire surface. So the ability to just touch up where needed is going to save a lot of money in the use of this product. Normal, regular maintenance schedules and rigorous cleaning are still essential. The microbium super seal becomes only a tool to help you maintain sanitary surfaces much, much easier and much, much safer than what's been available in the market now. Obviously, everybody wants to know what it costs. There are so many variables that I cannot give you a direct answer to the question. It depends upon the surface. If you're treating material, it's going to take more of the super seal than it does to treat, say, concrete or ceramic tile. It depends upon how often it's washed, how much abrasion it gets. But what we have found out <clears throat> that when you calculate out, we're basically talking only cents per square foot for the application life of the product. It's an extremely economical solution as well as being very, very safe for us and our children. There are a number of applications that we can use. Of course, we've invited uh, people from a great cross-section uh, to join us. You can use this in hospitals. Uh, hospitals and schools are probably be our primary first uh, uh, push to get the product in. Uh, obviously, we can use it in all public bu uh, buildings. Today, where you see the little sign that says uh, sanitized every two hours, we'd like to see it replaced with treated by microbium. You don't have to treat every two hours now. Once a day is sufficient. Hotels, elevators, escalators, restaurants, even the rooms. I read a study uh, came out about a month ago said the dirtiest thing in a hotel room today is the TV remote control. We can put this product on a TV remote control when it's being manufactured. We can use it in central air conditioning works. We can use it in sports stadiums, public markets, wet markets, dry markets, trains, airplanes, buses, taxis, cars, you name it. I remember so well <coughs> a couple of years ago when we were right in the midst of coming out of SARS where the government produced this wonderful video showing a guy sneezing on his hand, getting off the green minibus, grabbing the bar, and hopping off, and, you know, don't touch, don't touch. Well, we have a solution for that because you can put super seal on basically any surface you want. Private transportation, you can use it in your own car. Emergency response teams, even on throwaway clothing, everything that you do to help prevent the disease getting into you, every step you take is a little bit closer to being perfect. You can use it in your homes with your pets, your children's play areas. We have not designed the product to be effective or work on surfaces where you prepare food, but you can use it on surfaces where you store food. And the only reason for this is it takes buku big bucks to go to the FDA for them to test it and see <laughs> what it does to people. And, and it's a different product when it's on a surface as when it's in a liquid form. So we will eventually probably see ourselves there. Special applications. We can incorporate this product into the manufacturing process where products are made so that manufacturers can put on their, on their label, on their product, that this product is coated with microbium and is hopefully much, much safer 
especially for kids' toys or things like that. We are supplying, we can supply in small sizes. Our standard size are five liter bottles because our initial market is with uh, industry and commercial users. So in short, suitable for a wide range of applications and surfaces. It offers long-term protection unmatched by any other product available today. We are interested in talking to people about new applications. And I can't think of a meeting that I haven't been to in the last six months where we thought of some other new way we could use the product, some other thing we could offer. So we'd like to talk to you if you have any special problems, cleaning problems, or uh, problems with, uh, well, basically anything. The transmission of disease is our primary concern, but I think you'll find that the cleaning products, the cleaning side of this is much more effective and just as economical, if not more economical, than what you're already using just for standard cleaning. So we're happy to answer any questions you might have about using, applying, maybe modifying the product a little bit for a specific application. It's more up to you now. We have the product available in stock. We can deliver today or tomorrow. Uh, with that, I'm basically just going to turn over the meeting to uh, Dr. Vic. And I hope that you'll always remember the name Microbium when you start to see it on the elevators and in the laboratories and the different parts around town. All of these are registered trademarks from Soilbind in the UK. Right, thank you very much. Uh, just a little bit of a technical changeover there, and it's now it's my turn. Now, perhaps I ought to just explain a little bit about the forensic archaeologist. What's an archaeologist doing talking about cleaning and antimicrobial things? Well, my interest has been the origins of disease. And a few years ago, I was working on uh, some ancient Egyptian artifacts, carrying out the analyses to find out what the ancient Egyptians did. And it's quite surprising how they got some uh, pretty good ideas on how to deal with infection without really knowing what the mechanism of infection or uh, sepsis or antisepsis really was. So that, that's where the archaeology bit uh, fitted in. But for many, many years, I've had this interest in uh, uh, the chemistry of disease and dysfunction. And it's that that I want to talk to you a little bit about this afternoon. It's going to be some fairly deep chemistry. I make no apologies for that. Um, a lot of you are scientists or have uh, got a scientific, uh, scientific uh, interest in, in what's going on. I need to explain to you the logic of what's different about microbium and how it works. And really, I'm going to jump straight into here with the quaternary ammonium compounds. These are not the same as ammonia, you know, the stuff that you, you get in the, uh, the cleaner's cupboard. You take the, 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 the top off and you're holding it at arm's length because, you know, the smell is absolutely horrendous. It's toxic. It's nothing like that. They, these quaternary ammonium compounds have been around for quite some time, and they've been used uh, for um, quite important uh, applications. Whenever I, I, I go abroad, get on the plane, I take some quaternary ammonium compounds with me because they're superb for killing bugs, especially those coming through the, uh, the air con. The important thing about this is the quaternary. An ammonium compound would have a central nitrogen atom which carries a positive charge, hence ammonium. But with quaternary ammonium, instead of having hydrogens attached, we have alkyl groups, usually two methyl groups and alkyl groups as well. One of those alkyl groups could be another methyl, so you could have three methyls, or you could have two alkyls say, uh, to octal groups, to desyl groups. Various sizes, various lengths. The important thing is there are no free hydrogens on there. These are quaternaries. They're a lot safer than ammonia. That is the, the starting point for the, uh, uh, the work on the, uh, the biocides on the microbium. These quaternary ammonium compounds, as I say, have been used for quite a long time. They're efficacious. They have a very good remnant effect. They're stable. They're very easy to formulate. You can put them into uh, a whole variety of uh, different materials over a wide pH range. They have very little odor, very little taste, so it's quite easy to fragrance them as well. So ideal commercial products. When you compare the quaternaries 
against various other biocides or effect molecules, you've got um, uh, quite a nice pH range. Remember, pH is operating between 1 and 14. Well, the quaternaries, you can operate over most of that range, whereas other biocide types, the phenolics, phenol, of course, was one of the very first um, biocides, if you like, although it wasn't called a biocide then, introduced, what, 150 years ago by Lister and Le Maire, and still used to this day, you know, the carbolic soaps and so forth. Iodine-containing materials, you can only use them over a very narrow range, and likewise with hypochlorite or the bleachers, again, you, you've got a restricted range. For cleaning, the quaternaries win hands down, far better than either of the, uh, the other materials. They're also low staining. Go and wash your hands with, uh, with phenolics and you can smell the phenol for quite a long time. They do hang around and then if you go along and get hold of some food or something like that, you transfer that uh, uh, odour to the food. Dermal penetration is low, so in other words it doesn't go into your skin, doesn't last there for a, uh, for a long time. And from the commercial point of view, very, very good storage conditions. It lasts for a, uh, for a long time. Looking at disinfection and sanitization, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll also come up with some definitions in a moment, but not too bad. Okay, perhaps not as, uh, as, as powerful as some of these other materials, but um, what I say is, do you really want your kitchen or your bathroom smelling like a public laboratory? You know, <laughs> it, it, these things will work, but so will the quaternaries, provided you give them the time to work. So, definitions. There's a lot of definitions around, and I'll, I'll show you how this all fits in, but generally speaking, when we're talking about sanitizers, we're talking about uh, a material that's going to reduce a population. It's not going to kill every bacterium, it's not going to kill the, the, the spores, but it's, a, it's one particular level. Disinfectant takes it that little bit further. You get more killing of the, uh, the organism. And the sterilant, these are the very, very toxic chemicals, and you do sometimes have to be very, very careful in using them. And one of my other roles uh, in the, uh, the UK is to go around and look at the health and safety of using some of these sterilizing materials. Sometimes the sterilant is so toxic that the worker going back into that area becomes quite seriously injured because of the residual sterilant. Well, that's the EPA's uh, look on, uh, uh, on the definitions. There are other definitions that you can use. A disinfectant is when you've got very, very high populations of bacteria or fungi and soil or dirt. Whereas biocides, this is a much more modern term, essentially these are preventing, or any material that prevents degradation or putrefaction, uh, and particularly of organic materials. Not only uh, food products, but wood and, and concrete. And concrete will degrade with um, uh, certain biological uh, organisms. Antiseptics, that now tends to be uh, a, a term used for uh, uh, considering infection, and particularly on uh, uh, body surfaces, where sterilants is now considered a term uh, purely for um, uh, areas and, and, and zones. Uh, for instance, a room, you go, you go in and sterilize a room, or uh, sterilize an animal house, or something like that. When you look at quaternary ammonium compounds, and I'm taking one particular group of uh, quaternary ammonium compounds, where we've got two big long chains, like the dialkyls, or for example a didesyl system, with two methyl groups on the ammonium chloride. These units are in ppm, and we've got three groups of organisms here. On the left we've got the, uh, uh, some bacteria. And not bad, okay, there's, there's quite a variation here, but for uh, um, Bacillus subtilis, you know, that, that's fairly respectable in terms of, uh, uh, of its antimicrobial action, or its antibacterial action. The pseudomonas, not quite so good, but nevertheless, you can tackle pseudomonas, and given time, you can knock the pseudomonas out, as, as we proved. In fact, uh, we deliberately targeted pseudomonas in a lot of our tests because it was the worst case situation. With the algae, quite superb, you know, 0.2 parts per million. It's terrific uh, activity, that, for knocking out the, uh, the greenness on, uh, say, decking or on, uh, on paths. And um, 
fungi, again, not too bad. This is the one that I was particularly interested in, the black mould that you get in bathrooms. Um, be very interesting for the hotel management to try this thing out in uh, one or two of the bathrooms here. <laughs> you go and have a look on the ground. It's a beautiful growth medium for Aspergillus. Gets in there, and Aspergillus, of course, uh, in uh, uh, a situation that we encountered on Monday, one of the uh, uh, members of the audience was uh, very interested in uh, transplant uh, operations, and Aspergillus on the transplant organ can cause death not only to that organ, failure of transplant, but also failure of the person who's receiving that organ. So Aspergillus is, is quite an important area, and the quaternaries are very, very good at uh, taking Aspergillus out. We actually initiated some tests back in the UK about a year ago uh, with Aspergillus and we still have not got uh, the mould growing on those test samples. Absolutely incredible. Right, I warned you, you're going to get some chemistry. Well, here's some more chemistry. This is what a molecule would look like on a uh, molecular drawing program. Here's, uh, this one is uh, didesyl, dimethyl ammonium chloride. We've got two long 10 carbon chains there's one running down the back, one running down this side. There's the central uh, nitrogen atom, the ammonium. And then we've got a methyl coming out here and another methyl going behind. You see that shape? It, it's one of these amphoteric molecules where you've got a combination of non-polar organic character and polar inorganic character. And it's this amphoteric or uh, uh, semi-polar uh, system that uh, gives it its uh, particular properties. So if you put this material, for example, into water, it would assemble itself, and you produce these supramolecular structures. The blue circles represent the polar head units, or the, the ends where the, uh, uh, the charged structures uh, reside, and these straggly bits down here, these are the nonpolar tails. So put it into water, and you would get that sort of system, which is known as a micelle. Very, very important for drug delivery. But also important in an industrial application as well, because if you put the sort of molecule into oil, it's inverted. So you get the, uh, the polar heads, which are normally soluble in water, they assemble this way around, with the tail sticking outwards into the oil. And that is, in fact, a very, very crucial way of delivering some drugs. But that's another story. We have the micelles. That's the important thing. And now let's look at a cell structure. Because within the cell structures, you can see this one came from the, uh, uh, one of the Microsoft uh, programs, one of the uh, uh, encyclopedia. All cells contain membranes. You've got an outer membrane. You've got uh, cell walls. You've got membranes within the organelles in there. All these membranes are in fact composed of molecules very, very similar to these quaternary ammonium compounds. They are composed of these amphoteric molecules. Again, a diagram taken off the web showing the uh, idealized structure of um, a cell membrane. And in this particular diagram, it talks about sticky heads. In other words, these are the polar bits that all stick together and uh, pointing towards the water, whereas the slippery tails, these are the non-polar bits that all uh, link together, light dissolves like, and in a real situation, the polar or anionic heads are in fact phosphate groups, whereas the non-polar tails, unlike our quaternaries, instead of them just being hydrocarbon chains, these are in fact peptide and, uh, and glycan chains. We don't need to go any further into the chemistry of that. The main thing is that you've got polar and non-polar, and these things assemble themselves together like a flattened micelle. Now, when we start looking at particular organisms, uh, bacteria, a long time ago, um, an old uh, European German chemist called Gram developed a stain uh, in order to identify different types of, um, of bacteria. And th this classification is still used. You know, talk about gram-positive and gram-negative. Well, gram stain was essentially a mixture of two dyes, crystal violet and saffronin. And the structures here of crystal violet and, uh, and saffronin, quite big molecules, aromatic systems, 
the blue bits are nitrogen systems and the, the whole system is positively charged. So you, you think about positively charged systems, negatively charged polar heads in the, uh, the membranes, in the, uh, uh, in the micelles. You can see why the positively charged bits of gram stain suddenly became attracted to the negatively charged bits of the membrane. So that's why um, the crystal violet, and likewise with the saffronin, where you've got uh, four components, and again with the charge spread out over the whole system, that material would also be attracted to the uh, anionic heads in the, the membranes. So if you've got a whole series of anionic systems in the cell wall of the bacterium, that would attract these materials, and then you would have a gram positive. If it was a gram negative, you must have a different sort of uh, cell wall, different sort of membrane, and the material was not attracted. With the introduction of electron microscopy and uh, fairly sophisticated mass spectrometric analysis, you can actually look at the, in the individual components in these uh, different bacteria, and it's now down almost to the level of taking a, a single bacterial cell, um, isolating uh, a bit of the cell wall and getting that into a mass spectrometer. It, it's very, very exciting stuff and I could spend several hours talking about that. I'm not going to, don't worry. <laughs> but, oh gosh. <laughs> Anyhow, the, the main thing is that there is a defined structure. The crucial thing is that you've got the nonpolar parts with a, a, a polar part. And the cell surface in a gram-positive bacterium is very strongly polar. Not only is it strongly polar, it's negatively charged, and hence that's the binding to the, uh, the gram stain. Whereas in a gram-negative bacterium, it, it's quite different. Well, not too different. The difference is in a multi-layer structure. And it's this composite structure which gives the strength to the, the gram-negative bacteria. That's why they tend to be a little bit more difficult to knock out. It's because of this layering. But nevertheless, each of those membranes is set up in exactly the same way as a standard membrane. It's got lipid bilayers. It's got these things sitting together. And if we can now impinge on those, if we can perturb those, uh, those systems, well, then we've got a means of killing the bacterium, whether it's gram-positive or gram negative. Not only the bacterium, we can take fungi out. Fungi are very, very similar. They just have a, uh, a little bit less of the peptido uh, glycan layer. Viruses, different sort of system altogether. Rather than these uh, fairly complex lipid bilayers, you've got a protein layer. This is because of the recognition that is required. And with viruses, a lot easier to, to knock out the, the capsid uh, shell, or the outer shell of the virus. Let's say it's composed of protein subunits which are in different geometrical shapes. And it's that geometrical shape that gives the recognition of the virus. So that's how the immunological systems uh, operate. But the virus has got to be uh, able to insinuate itself into the, uh, uh, the host cell. That's why it has a different uh, system. The virus uh, capsid, of course, now becomes a lot easier to, uh, uh, to disrupt. It's much thinner. And that is the important thing. You know, we, we tend to get into a panic when we start talking about viruses, or at least certain people do. They start worrying about bird flu, dog flu, horse flu. Oh, gosh, everything's flu. Viruses. If you can catch them before they get into the body, that is the time to actually knock them out. Don't wait until it gets into the body and then you've got the difficulty of distinguishing between a host cell which is infected with a virus and the host cell that's not infected with a virus. Get the virus whilst it's on the hard surface. And that's why all this barrier nursing is being introduced in all the European hospitals to have a go at the viruses. So H5N1, you know, there was a, a thing in the press earlier this week, uh, you know, it's some guy who's uh, developed a, a system, or we were told he's developed a system in order to immunize against H5N1. Well, it's coming, you know, soon, perhaps a few years, but the moment you can kill virus very, very easily. Even H5N1, hot soapy water will kill a virus. You don't need to go too far with it. 
So what happens when a QAC interacts with a microbe, whether it's a bacterium, a fungus, algae, virus, or what have you? You get this perturbation of the cytoplasmic membrane and also the cell walls. The positive charge nitrogen, that thing that I've been emphasizing all the, all the time, that interacts with the anionic bit, the phosphate groups, the glycophosphates, part of a, a phospholipid system. So like, um, I'm sorry, uh, the opposite charges, the positive charge and the negative charge react together. They, uh, they, they, they impinge upon each other. You get this electrostatic interaction. That's the starting point. But it doesn't stop there. Because of our um, molecule, our uh, quaternary ammonium compound, having this amphoteric or this dual nature of polar and nonpolar, the nonpolar chains spread out and they insert themselves between the anionic heads so that they can join the nonpolar peptidoglycan chains. And it's that insertion in those membranes that is the, the killing power, the penetrating power of this type of molecule. It causes uh, the formation of my cells, not just of the quaternary ammonium compound, but the quaternary ammonium compound and the organism. Once you start to produce those micelles, you then start to get leaking or leakage of the cytoplasmic material. So in other words, the solution starts flowing out. There's a hole, there's a chink, the material comes out and you now have uh, um, um, leakage of things like potassium ions and so forth. And that can start occurring at very, very low concentrations. So. Um, leakage of the nucleotides, the sugars, and the, uh, the amino acids, as well as the potassium ions, um, starts taking place fairly low down. Um, but obviously, the extent of the uh, antisepsis is going to depend upon these three things. Everybody realizes yes, it's going to depend upon how much antiseptic you've got there. It's also going to depend upon how many bacteria, or fungi, or what have you, you've got there the greater the uh, infection, well then the more antiseptic you're going to re uh, require. But what tends to be forgotten is this time element. That is very, very important. A lot of the tests that are carried out on efficacy are perhaps for a minute contact, or three minutes contact. If you can extend that contact to 24 hours, or 24-7 for weeks, you've got a much more powerful tool, or weapon rather than tool, You've got a very, very powerful weapon to kill those organisms. So, as I said, very, very low concentration levels, down to a few parts per million, you will get stasis, bacterial stasis or what have you. You'll even stop spores from um, producing the outgrowth. The, the hyphal growth will be stopped, and we've seen that time and time again. At medium concentration levels, you can then get cell death, death of the, uh, uh, the bacteria, uh, and, uh, and so on. Right. What's special about microbium? I, I, I hope I, I've shown you that uh, the quaternary ammonium compounds are something that's worth looking at. What have we done to the quaternary ammonium? Well, microbium has this material that I refer to as a cyclot, a silicon quaternary. There's our quaternary group coming down here with its alkyl chain. We've got one big long alkyl chain and a couple of methyls sticking out. And then we've got the nitrogen atom there. And then we've got another chain coming out here which involves a silicon atom with three oxygens around it. So this is uh, a siloxy group. Try saying that after you've had a few drinks at lunchtime. <laughs> and compared to our typical quaternary, our di style dimethyl ammonium chloride, you can see there's a, um, quite a, a close similarity um, in these two molecules. So that's what's in microbium. Here is its actual chemical structure, so if you, you know, want to write it down, that's fine. It's registered. <laughs> if you do write it down, you've got to be able to write down the name and say it. It's dimethyl octadesyl 3 trimethoxysyl propyl ammonium chloride. And try saying that after a drink of red wine. 
this material is registered. It's registered with the EU. It's registered in the, uh, the biocide list. It's also registered with the, uh, the EPA as a biocide. And it is, uh, as I say, an effective material. The important thing is it's in two bits. This molecule has two moieties. The quaternary moiety that I've been talking about for the last uh, uh, few minutes. But also this bit, this trimethoxysilyl group. This is the difference. This is the, the reason why microbium is unique, and it's the, uh, the power of the microbium. Not to kill, but to bind to a surface. It's this group that links the quaternary onto any surface. And what I've done is I, I've represented a general surface, any substrate. I'm sorry about the amount of information that's on this slide, but you don't need to follow the chemistry too closely. There's our substrate. It can be a whole variety of things, whether it's a plastic, a wood, carbohydrate, or whether it's a concrete, a ceramic, a metal. Somewhere or other, there is an oxygenated function. So I've represented that by OH. Here's our uh, uh, molecule, our cyclot with a trimethoxy group. You've got three methoxies in there. One of those links on to this hydroxy function in the substrate. So we've now got this material bonded onto our substrate. That was one of the hoops in Nate's uh, animation. The other two methoxy groups are still there, and they link sideways to adjacent chains. So you get a, a sideways or a parallel polymer produced on the surface of the substrate. That polymer is a silicone, right? So you've got a silicone layer with these quaternary groups sticking out from it. So you've effectively produced a polymer on your substrate surface with these quaternaries which are there to puncture the, um, uh, the bugs. So that's our standard structure and you can see you've now got your effectively your uh, um, quaternary ammonium compound like DDAC but it's now bound onto the surface and that is the crucial feature of this, uh, um, this effect molecule. Okay you say, so what? You've got that on there. Prove that it's effective. Well, that's what we've been doing over these past uh, uh, several months. We've followed specific protocols. But those protocols, of course, have got to relate to a material bonded to um, an insoluble uh, material. It may be uh, a fabric. It may be a piece of wood. It may be a piece of concrete or plastic or what have you. There are standard procedures. But instead of the one or two minute contact, in every case, the 24 hour contact was used. The organisms, a whole variety of organisms were used. Okay, the, the standards that you would expect, you know, the Staph aureus, the uh, Aspergillus niger, you would expect those. Pseudomonas featured prominently because we knew that Pseudomonas was, of course, one of the more difficult ones. Pseudomonas, incidentally, you find in a lot of bottles of detergent. It actually eats the detergent. This is the one I'm particularly interested in, thiobacillus uh, group, because these are the things that cause degradation of engineering systems. These are the things that cause the, uh, the sulfate uh, reduction, production of acids in oil pipelines and in central heating systems. Okay, if you've got a small central heating system, the damage is not uh, quite so large, but a few years ago, Terminal 2 at Manchester Airport had to be shut down for a week because they got a thiobacillus uh, infection in it. Substrates that we've tried, natural fibers, synthetic fibers, even the high level uh, synthetic fibers, metals, aluminium, steel, stainless steel, concrete, ceramics, travertine, marble, granite, you name it, we've tried it and it sticks. And it sticks well. What sort of results did we get when we put this on? Remember the 24 hour contact, even at loadings, as small as 0.01%. In other words, 100 parts per million of material loaded into a concrete sample. Log reduction factors greater than four. And the important thing was that that log reduction factor was obtained after 28 days. So not just after you just cleaned it or just applied it, not just a day after or a week after, but four weeks later you've still got this fantastic reduction rate. And the data that we've got from the Hong Kong laboratory that's been doing the independent testing this week, we, you know, 90 days, and it's still up at 
minus 100% kill rate. That is just totally incredible. In some instances we got a small reduction and that was because the surface had, be, uh, had been uh, subjected to a fairly regular washing. So, last slide. The microbium, it differs because it's got this hook that allows you to attach it to a, a surface, any surface. And once it's attached there, it doesn't come off. There was a whole load of other work where we were using the uh, high resolution mass spectrometry to show that this linkage did not break. You know, we were detecting down at one part per quadrillion. Million, 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 million. You know, it was so small, um, you know, my uh, dean of faculty used to say, have you seen any of this yet? You know, it is such a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of material. This stuff doesn't come off. It, it's tied on there. You've also got an effective biocide or sanitizer or disinfectant and the levels because of that time element remember the time element I was telling you about because of the time element it's there all the time you get these very very high kill rates it's almost as a sterilant it's very very powerful it's unique it's only available through the germ kill operation you know as Nate said it's come into uh, Hong Kong for a reason and that's because we want to take it forward now that's only one aspect of the germ kill production. You've got the, the se uh, super seal, which contains the microbium. You've also got a pre-cleaner, a post-cleaner and replenisher, and the monitor. And rather than tell you about the chemistry of those, we thought it would be far better if a, a demonstration was given to you as to how easy these things were used and what they did. And we've also got a biotrice machine along so you can get an immediate idea of how easy it is to, uh, uh, to knock these organisms out. So, thank you, Mr. Poole, for inviting me here to talk. Uh, I do apologize if I bored you with the technical aspects, but I'm afraid that's my hobby and my prerogative as a visitor. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all coming along. But uh, obviously, you want to see how these things work. And I'll introduce you to Ian Day, who is the Hong Kong representative of Sorbine and he is going to demonstrate for you what we would like to do now is do a demonstration we have certain areas uh Adak, can you come forward please we have some plastic chairs plastic tables and some marble material which we will put the product on and you can use the Deep 咬入去那個surface那裡 Okay, now while Adduck is wiping that down, uh, go away. Uh, this UV light, 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 你看得到這裡大家看不看得到 OK繼續 
tiles, one has microbium on it, one does not. And as you can see, and we will allow you to come a lot closer to have a look closely yourself, that the one that does highlight is the one that has the microbium, whereas the other one, with no microbium on it, will not highlight. Now, a lot of people say, it highlights, but is it killing the bacteria and the viruses? We will now show you in just a few moments, probably after tea, um, that we have another machine, electronic machine, which shows that it is actually whether there are uh, bacteria on the surface and where there is no bacteria on the surface. So, a duck has now sprayed this area. It's still a little bit damp. We'll leave it to let it dry off. Uh, what I would suggest is for a few moments until we set this up properly, finished product. Okay? Thank you. You want to try to get some more heaven? Thank you, sir. Yeah, 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 please, sir. Hello. If you'd like to come forward, uh, we will try and demonstrate, first of all, we will do a secondary test with the BioTrace machine, which actually detects living organisms on the surface. So please, come forward, come forward. All right, we need a duck, a duck, please. Now, first of all, we just sprayed this. This plastic is the same as this plastic, okay? Just a different shape. Because these two plastic are the same as the same. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Um, just the eight, yes. Um, you got a little bit of a pun go again. All right, um, you got a what a high long what a good monitor, so you can see the same thing. Okay, um, uh, this one, then, then, we don't know that pin, pin, go, has got this by the way, just here in the middle, yeah. Okay, um, you can see that this one, then, has got this one, has got um, you know, what a local monitor, being gong, chill, yeah. But at the same time, at the same time, if we put it in this one, it will be gone. So we have to wait for it to go in and take the water, clean it, and see who will continue to go in. So who will continue to go in and who will continue to go in. Earlier, three things are the same. Same manufacturer, there's nothing here. If you come down here, the same manufacturer, there's nothing here. If you come down here, you can see it highlight, okay? Goes along, and I've highlighted there, and I wrote the name G-Kill in the monitor. So you can see that. This file, there's no one. Okay, so this demonstration, we are going to take the two demonstrations, and then we will take the called BioTrace. This electronic product can be able to how do you see these three files? Who has those weeds? Who has those weeds? Who has those weeds? And then this one, the water is put on it. Okay. So we wipe both of them away. Can we switch the light off? Thank you. Let's get another torch here. Yes. Put that, please. Okay. There you go. 
好啦，頭先咧可以行近少少，啊，呢呢度冇洗嘅 ，OK， 但喺呢度咧佢係攞水洗過，係冇嗰個 highlight 喺度嘅 ，means no microbial。And over here, can you see the highlight there? Can you get a little bit closer? Go off. Yeah. Go off of it. Okay, go here. Yeah, it's only UV light. <laughs> so there's, it's there. Whereas here, 頭先噴咗呢度。呢度咧，你見咧，我哋係冇噴嘅。So this proves that microbium is there and working. Now the question we have is: Is it really killing the microbe? Is are there more bugs there than there on there? So Mary, you choose this one. Okay, we'll do this corner. So what Nathan does is this is a very specific product developed in. Don't touch it. Yeah, area, and he rub it up and down into the size of a palm to pick up the bacteria from that surface. We don't know what the bacteria is. All we know is we'll see if there's bacteria there. Okay, when he's rubbed it, okay, and he's now got picked up enough, he puts it in, punctures it through onto the liquid there, and he shakes it for about twenty seconds. After the 20 seconds, this machine will give you a count of how many bacteria was picked up in the wiping from the surface. This is used internationally and recognized in a little more shaking, right? uh, recognized internationally as an accepted technology. Put it in. 31,000. 31,000. 31,748. We took these three from the back there and we did this one. So 31,000, RLU, which means, hey, it's not bad, huh? Uh, <laughs> which means that there is a live organism in this very small area of 31,000. Now, what we have to show you is with the G-Kill system using microbium will do the same corner. So Nathan will do the same thing and pick up as much bacteria that he can and let's compare the one that has microbium and the one that does not have microbium. Okay, this is the, that's the old one. Okay, now Nathan has to shake it for about 20 seconds. Now, we are saying as a company that our product is going to kill the bacteria on this surface. When a bacteria dies, the ATP count is zero very, very, very quickly. So Nathan now will shake it for about 20 seconds. Could you just tell me when you did that little time with the microbial? Yes. How long ago? When, when did you do oh. I did this before Chinese New Year. I, I was playing in the office and I wrote the name G-Kill, <laughs> you know, just for fun, just to see if I could see it. So now it is measuring. Now is when I pray, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's measuring and 1,087. So with the microbium product on there, there is still a little bit, 1,087. This one had 31,000. It should be less. It, it is. Much is. Much. touched a cloth. Oh, okay. Fair it's enough. Thank yeah, you very I much. Did, <laughs> I did it. And the other thing is, remember, time has a factor. It doesn't necessarily kill immediately when something lands. So even all of you breathing on it, there is going to be some bacteria there. Some right? bacteria there. So but the key but factor... But it will die. It, it, it'll really never, ever get to zero. Yeah. Yes. But most of our readings are in the very in the low 100s, 200s, or 300s right. for surfaces like this. So, in a three-step test to show that the bacteria is or virus, bacteria, fungus, living organism, it's dying there, but it's not dying there. Now, this machine is very expensive. So, we have two three steps to prove that that is there. The first step is to show you that the material is there, it should be killing. Second step, if you, you or your organization wants to be very, very sure, we can then use the bio trace. We can come into your office, 
your mouse or your tie or whatever, and we can wipe it down and get the test. The third test is the laboratory test. And we have, when you leave, we will have a brochure with a report is from the Hong Kong Polytechnic. And the MRSA is a, a very naughty bug. It's very hard to kill. You know that, right? And the Hong Kong Polytechnic have tested 30 days and it has found a 100% killing rate in a laboratory test. Now, they're not my company. They're independent. We gave them these things and they ran the test and this is their results. It's not my results. And then subsequently, on a much longer term, with another uh, bacteria called E. coli, which is quite naughty. A lot of children catch E. coli. We have been running a test with the Hong Kong Standards and Testing Organization since last year. The last test that they did, batch reduction on day 217 of 99.68. That's seven months later. Chat you. It's still killing at a rate of 30,000 to 1,000. It really does work. It's very easy. You saw our duck spraying the, the table. It's not that difficult. But the next bug, as we're breathing, the next bug that falls on there will be dead. The next bug that falls on there will be alive. And that is the difference. Uh, the, the cleaning lady is cleaning the dead bodies from there. The cleaning lady is cleaning the live bodies from there. So if you put your hand on here, like I did, at least 25,000 bugs. <laughs> don't, don't, shake your hand. Yeah, don't shake my hand anymore. I just say goodbye. So <laughs> the cleaning lady with the mop or the thing, and she's spreading it here and spreading it there. All those bugs are being spread out. Whereas here, she's actually cleaning dead bugs. She's picking up dead cells and opening the surface for the next cells to go in. And uh, based on the test from the Hong Kong standards, almost seven months later, you can still feel confident that that's clean. So when your children or your patients or your friends put their hand on, hey, how are you? Oh, okay, okay, I can shake your hand. <laughs> I'm willing to shake your hand. It's non-toxic. I use it in my family home. My children clean their toys with it. I know it's safe. They can drink a little bit of it, they won't die. They can, you know, sniff out, you know what children do. And in schools, very important. We are, I'm sure a lot of you, children, patients, and people in, the, in, in, in Hong Kong, to be a little cleaner so that H5N1, SARS, E. coli, doesn't get in the system because it's not alive anymore. And with that, thank you very much for coming today. Appreciate it. Please have some more tea, coffee, and sandwiches. If you have any questions, a duck is available. I'm available. If you have any technical questions, Vic is also available. I think the most important thing, question will be yes. how much the price. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Uh, um, <laughs> no, no. Um, we have done some analysis. If you say the comparison for one bottle of this compared to one bottle of um, Clorox, Clorox you have to use every day. Yeah. And one thing very important to our company and to Vic and to the company in England, the environment. Clorox is going into the groundwater, is going into the, the harbor. It's going to affect our children, not us. We're too late. We're too old, you know. <laughs> but it's going to affect our children and our grandchildren. Clorox, over the last 15 years, every year they're making their products stronger and stronger and stronger because the viruses and the bacteria are creating a resistance to the poisoning system that they are. We do not poison. All through the years that come, they will still die. Pe Sorry? No mutations, yes. So you don't have H5N1, H5N7, H5N9, H5N10. We will kill all of them because they are a single cell bug. They come from influenza A. Very simple. It's just changed. So antibacteria using poisoning system cannot kill it. It's stronger. With us, bang, he dead. No problem. <laughs> So but if the you knife doesn't make any noise. Yeah, a knife that okay, it's a knife. We have a knife sticking out there. But it's very, very important. It's awake at night, right? Yeah. It's very, very important to understand. 
We have done a lot of tests on this and it is very safe for us, the environment. The only one it's not safe for is the bugs, is the viruses, the bacteria and the fungus and the spores. That's what's dangerous to this. So will you provide the prices? Yes, we will. Not tonight. Uh, the prices will come from our duck and our uh, Hong Kong distributor. Please just tell them you want the prices. We'll have them sent over to you. One more thing, very important, um, as you're asking about price. How far does this go? Okay, here is one liter of deep clean. Well, let's, let's not talk about deep clean for the moment. Let's go with Super Sealy. How far, how much spread do I get? It really depends. If you're spraying this kind of surface, okay, you're looking at one liter for about 15, 20, 25 square meters. Okay, you bump them up square feet on one liter. Because, you know, so I have a whole thin layer, I shall be. However, if you're spraying it on this, it, it will absorb. So it might be 1 to 10 square meters, might be 1 to 12 square meters. It depends on the material that you spray it on. But on average, 15, 20 square meters on hard surfaces, I don't think there's a problem. Well, we did one liter. I think you can't really see it. We measured it exactly to one liter. I thought sprayed that. You know, yeah, yo <laughs> that's right. Um, it goes very far. And remember, Super CLA, you only do one every two, three weeks, a month, sometimes even six months. You don't need to do it again. Deep clean, one month, six months. The only one that you will use every day is the, de the daily clean. That's the one Assam has to go and, you know, take care and clean it and wipe it down right? This is the one that has to be used frequently. Those two, you cover this room, you put them away. You don't really do a second application until you see ye more wall, where we have to do it. Now, let me, let me give you an example. If this table is covered with the materials already, you can. If you don't have our system to show that it's there or not there, being an administrator in a hospital, no, no. <laughs> being an administrator in a hospital or a school, wait, mola panzaiger sina, you know, spray it all, cover it over, just to make sure so my children are safe. Whereas with our system, we're actually helping you save money. If you come along here and you shine the torch and you say, you see, then you take a little bit and you cover that. You only cover what's needed. Saves you money and you know you're protected. Whereas if you come up here and you come along here and you say, oh, so instead of covering it all, all the time, you're only covering what's necessary. This way, your cleaning regime becomes easier, faster, and safer. And I have a question. Sure. You just thought, um, let me show that. When when uh, Nate. Mr. Nate. Hamilton used the cotton bud yes. to take all this germ, yes, and I only show uh, see mm -hmm. only few drops, you know, yeah, those uh, highlight area, yes, but this area that did you didn't see the highlight. You no. put a drop Would you like to put a drop there? You do it. Uh, yes. Why don't you do it? <laughs> Uh, this particular um, tile I did myself, I did the spray, 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 clean, 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 let it dry, and then I, I didn't have to do the whole thing. I just wanted to try this bit and this bit, you know, and then when I, when I was satisfied that it was covered, I could do the whole thing. Very important, thank you. When the monitor sits on, where's the food? in sits on this area, that area is still effective. The monitor does not sit on top of it. It highlights the chemical, but it is still working. That is still killing, although there's a monitor on it. All right, let's leave it there sitting for a bit. 
Is this my table or their table? Is their table? That oh, can get it a little bit wet. We'll wash it off. Okay. Pick it up. Lights, please. Dun dun drum roll. <laughs> yeah. There it is. All right? That's your dollop. That's where he puts it on. So it is highlighted there. The other areas are still highlighted with the G kill in there. And where you put it in, there it is. So this area is well covered with Super CLA. And that's why the result is 1,000 compared to 33, 31,000. Whatever, 30 plus. 30,000 plus. So we are 30 times better than the natural plate. The plastic's on the inside, and people say, wow, it's all pretty big. Well, what it's good for is, is coating irregular surfaces. You can grab mm -hmm. doorknobs, mm -hmm. door handles. You can grab toilet handles and mm -hmm. fixtures and make sure that they're coated where you naturally touch anyway. Mm -hmm. Then the idea behind the monitor is to put it on those areas where everybody's touching. Mm -hmm. That way, that's the one that's going to wear off the fastest, and that way you can tell when to reapply. Then you can look at the other big areas. So, oh, let's try a drop over here. Let's try a drop over here. So this is really a very economical way to check. Not only that the microbe is working, but the cleaning people are working too. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, we're here. Um, I'm sure you have gotten a card, especially that gentleman in the suit back there. Make sure you get his card. Um, he will give you a quotation. Our organization will come up to your offices or to do a demonstration for you privately in a certain area, you say, mm, Chongji, I want to try Chongji. We'll be very happy to show you. If you want to do it uh, in a group, we can organize another seminar. If you want to actually have us evaluate. 50 square bucks. Oh, 50 square bucks. Two, daily clean. Instructions, the torch is separate. The torch is separate, but that's, that's uh, where we can provide it to you as part of the system as well. So, to go back to our sum and says, okay, this man is going to teach you how to do it. And he'll say like, shh, 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 just like we did over there, and use it. Got that, then you can go on. They will then learn, I have got to do everything, otherwise it's not clean. And that becomes important from a management uh, supervisory role to make sure when they say they clean it, they clean it. Because they're cleaning it for you, <laughs> you know, not for anybody else. So Actually, maybe, maybe Roger should speak. Hmm? Uh, uh, quality assurance system. That if you, anybody, just, most people have got 9001, 9002. But how do you validate? How does that person who's doing the cleaning validate? All they do is sign on a piece of paper and say, because I've wiped over, and therefore it must be clean. But there's no validation proof without getting into laboratory, sweat testing, expensive equipment, whereas the system we've got, that every cleaner has in their pocket. They can sign off and validate. The supervisor can just walk in quickly anywhere he wants to, to validate, check it. In Europe, we're heavily with MRSA. Uh, it is a big hit, and it's been reported over here in hospitals, etc. So, this is a, an aid on solving a problem which is international there at the moment, and it's, it's a potential problem because nobody can actually validate the product. There is another, I think, another company. It's Silver Leon or something like that. Mm -hmm. Silver, Silver Iron. Um, titanium dioxide. They were they were talking the same issue, you know. I yes. don't know whether it's the same company or the no, other different, company. different technology. Um, if you want a very technical first thing is it can only be applied by specially trained people and special equipment. You see the put all the white out there. It won't stick to every surface, it only sticks to certain surfaces. And they with with their system it sprays on certain materials will stick certain materials and more. Most people use it, they build it in at manufacturing. Brian, <laughs> when you pick it up, the way it kills bugs, it comes off in order to kill. Ours is on contact. That makes a very big difference. We are completely environmentally friendly. We have no cancerous agents in there. We have no toxicity. 
as we say, you have to drink three of one of those each to get sick, and then some more to get sick. It's in margarine tubs, it's in refrigerators, yeah, food containers, all the things that you're touching, eating. At the same time, that's all going into you, so our children are being poisoned by heavy metals, you know. And that uh, is a heavy if you want to dispose of silver iron technology into a system, or if you've already got it there, microbial will work with it. Mm. Doesn't stop it working. Yeah. So, that is so you could have belts and braces. <laughs> <laughs> and they say yeah. nanotechnology. We use nanotechnology, but we don't use nanotechnology in our product. We use nanotechnology in our manufacturing. If you are wanting to come up to our facility in Chinwan, you are seeing we're using nanomanufacturing technology, which means it's good for the environment. It's a green manufacturing system. And Nathan and uh, with Vic and Roger and everybody put together a very, very unique manufacturing ability here in Hong Kong because we're environmentally friendly. We can go to see. Sure, anytime. Just let our duck know or Nathan or I know. Please come up and have a look and we'll even give you a couple. Thank you, Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Because it's a water-based product, number one, how to evaporation. Secondly, the coating is only 10 microns down. Now, if you look at these, it, you cannot tell. One is completely coated. That's, that's for ceramic or, yeah, or that. But if you come over here, if I shine the light on it, you'll see it. Right. The, the, uh, the microbial. It's not locking together at like paint or varnish on the top, but we're actually locking into the particles in as you know that first box in the picture. That's the way it goes together. Okay. So and if you feel it, you can't it's not any rougher. It's there. And you can only see it with that. <laughs> because when you see some water sign you say even under the sunlight, even under the sunlight, yeah. very close to sunlight, if you use these lights, you, it's very close to sunlight, and we try to detect it, and it's all we have seen it. Now, if you say with this, over a period of 10, 15 years, will there be discoloration? I'll tell you in 15 years time when you and me have a beer and say, no, I didn't do it, you know. <laughs> After he's bought it for 10, 15 years. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's tried it. Plastics, metals, woods, even concrete. I, I think you would get uh, more <laughs> from the normal UV. Yes. Yes. No, 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 it's true. We can't, we can't say this officially, but I have cut myself. You cut myself? No, okay. I cut. And what happened? I put the super suit on. About 24 hours. Well, at the end of the day, actually, it, it was less uh, yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Within the 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, hours. that's the main yeah. thing. That's the proof. That's yeah. the proof. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's only 20 <laughs> <laughs> 25 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, very very sorry. But uh, one of my techniques, I'm very sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. One more chance, one, two, three, two. Thank you. 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 Thank